Yeah. Where you are, I'm here with the former president, the godfather and the father of the modern Nigeria. It is not always that we have the opportunity to be with the former president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Chief Olusegun Obasanjo. Baba, it's a pleasure to be in your presence. Thank you very much. You are most welcome. I've heard a lot about you. I've read about a lot about you as a child and as a grown-up. I do not live in Nigeria, but every time there is crisis, we see you waiting. And I was telling my friend while we were coming, I said, if every Nigerian leader have the time to take interest and take a position like you do, I think Nigeria would be a better place. We've heard about the conspiracies of the elite. I think it's our major problem. Where people are supposed to speak up, they do not. They keep quiet. And it becomes confusion. For example, the Justice Honorance case. People are supposed to speak with one voice. That what is going on is wrong. But we are not saying that. But you are there at the forefront saying your mind. And people all over the world, whether they like it or not, whether they have political affiliations, they are following you and they are thanking you for what you are doing. So now that I have the opportunity, I must tell you, thank you for your leadership position. Thank you very much. And um, I appreciate, of course, what you have just said. But I don't need to be thanked. Now, I have enjoyed the grace of God, immense grace of God. I've also enjoyed the facilities that Nigeria could provide for me, having been born here as a Nigerian. And if God has given me anything, I believe that I am created, I am nurtured, I am uh, prepared by God to serve Nigeria, to serve humanity, and to serve God. And I cannot serve God if I do not serve humanity. So whatever I am doing or whatever I have done, I believe it is by the grace of God and I thank God for it. But I thank you for thank you very much. Uh, your remark. Yeah, before any other thing, we, like you said, you are not a member of PDP, but we are doing the 16 years of PDP, and that has to do with governance. And when we started researching, what we found out, that there was a leader who was the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, just when Nigeria was that at the verge of civil war, the responsibility was on him to unify the country, to build that bridges that has been destroyed. And that mantle of leadership fell on you. And you started by building that leadership, international relations, paying off foreign debts, pension scheme, minimum wage, EFCC, and everything. They were uh, institutions that you created or policies that you developed to empower the ordinary <coughs> Nigerian. And we are fortunate today to have you speak about your vision when you developed these policies, what you saw, what you, what you thought about. Well, as you rightly pointed out, I was in prison from 1995 to 1998. And I, I was in prison, I was sentenced for 30 years. Um, I could have languished there and died there, but the man who even sentenced me to prison, who put me in jail, said to a number of people that three of us will not come out of jail or imprisonment alive. Myself, M.K. Wabiola and Shehu Yaradua. 